press this and you can see this hear this taste this and experience this Press the green button at Ireland.com. Eurogold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Eurogold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial and industrial build. Vita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. The Warrington Irish Club friendly and welcoming club keeping the Irish culture alive. We have Irish and country music every Saturday night, tribute nights, race nights, charity nights and karaoke. All live sports are shown on big screens. We have snooker, dominoes and crown green bowling teams along with arts and craft. Pop in for a friendly welcome and book your event at the Warrington Irish Club. Give Frank a call on 01925 243 363. Mulligan's Funeral and Monumental Services are a family-owned funeral service first established by the late Brian Mulligan in 1996. We provide funeral homes in Gorton, Manchester and Reddish, Stockport and we pride ourselves on giving a friendly and professional service to all the families who use our service. Contact us on 0161 432 0809 Founded in Kilkenny, Ireland in 1702, but lost on a bet on a horse race in Deauville, France, 1918. Sullivan's was re-established a few years ago by direct descendants of two great Kilkenny brewing families, the Smithicks and the Sullivans. We're about to embark on our own journey across the United Kingdom. But this time, we won't bet the brewery. <laughs> Sullivan's. Brewing is in our blood. Press the green button and visit the island of Ireland. See Ireland.com. everyone and welcome to the show. This week we're coming to you from the Hilton Hotel in London for a sellout crowd for the Kerry Association Dinner Dance. Over 500 guests and a great representation from the Kerry winning football team. And of course Sam Maguire is here. We'll be having wonderful music from Barry Owen and his band. Joe McKeown, the world champion dancer, will be taking to the floor. And Dahi O'Shea from RTE is the master of ceremonies. So let's get the show on the road. Welcome to the Caribbean Association. My name is Jerry McCarthy. I am the present chairman of the Caribbean Association here in London. Uh, I come from Car Sabine County Kerry. Dahi, another wonderful night for the Kerry Association here in London. Do you know what, I haven't been here since we were here last year. And again, last, I suppose at this point last year things were getting back together a bit more. But this year, 2022, we're full on. It's great to have loads and loads of people from Kerry. And we have a few special guests here tonight, of course. We have Hayley Reynolds, the London Rose. She represented the Irish community here in London so well in Tralee during the summer. Uh, Jack O'Connor is here and I met a few of the footballers earlier on. And I'm not too sure any other county would be happy to hear this, but Sam Maguire is here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Ta Sam Savala. <laughs> Ma 
Margaret, Secretary of the Kerry Association here in London. What a night it is tonight. You've been busy. Very busy. We're delighted with the turnout. 510 and maybe a few stragglers. We're delighted. You've got so many people here that supported you down the years. It's fantastic. Yeah, we've got the main and most important guests. We have Sam Maguire with Patrick McGillicuddy, our Kerry Person of the Year. We have Ethel Cordoff, a fantastic lady who's written a wonderful book, and lots of other great friends. We're missing Sheila Dixon tonight, our fabulous treasurer. She's very sick at home in bed, so if she's watching this, hi Sheila, we all miss you. We're here to honour a man of many names, Pat, Patrick, Ford, his most precious title, and the one he cherishes the most, his dad and granddad. Ladies and gentlemen, the Kerry Person of the Year, my dad, Pat and Gilpin. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, Reverend Fathers, and Sam Tim. <laughs> he gave me my first job when I came to London 40 years ago. Pat, many congratulations on becoming the Kerry Man of the Year. Thank you very much indeed. It's a great honour and I don't feel worthy of it because of all the great people that received it before me. However, I will embrace it and do my best to make a difference. Now you gave a very passionate speech there tonight and everybody was hanging on to every word. And of course you're a, a true Kerry man, aren't you? You know, you want to support things at home as well. Absolutely, absolutely. And we're all the same people, uh, our diaspora and our home people. And what I would really like is our diaspora who have done very well in the world to invest in Kerry and the Kerry County Council are open for business. I would ask everybody to stand up and to give the person near you a vigorous hug. It's um, great to be able to celebrate with Dad his honour and for all of our friends and family to be here to support him. Very special for all the family. And he was a very, very popular winner tonight, wasn't he? All the crowd really appreciated him. Oh, 100%. I think that um, he was a worthy winner as he walked in. I think the speech he gave really helped um, people engage with the, the spirit of what Dad is trying to um, grow in the world, which is the continued love of Kerry, the continued investment in Kerry. And, and we've certainly seen it as a family, and hopefully everyone, will, everyone else will have seen it this evening. You know, fair play to Pat, I suppose. Uh, loads of people know him around mid Kerry and around Glen Car, and he's been here for a long time as well. And I suppose it's just a point in time where we just get to stop and to appreciate uh, one person every year. And it's Pat this year as well. And it's, a, it's an occasion for Pat to get his family and friends together. And, you know, a lot of people, they're unsung heroes. You often hear that term being used, and Pat is certainly one of those people. And it's important to acknowledge that as well. And, you know, we've been through a lot in the last couple of years, so it's impo important to have a good night out as well. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as I said, a few special guests, we'll be celebrating Pat as well. But, of course, being Kerry people, pe I hear there are people even here from Mayo. <laughs> and, and one or two from Galway. A few from Galway as well, and even Leeds as well. And they're all very, very welcome as well. But I'm not, I hope they won't be too, uh, the ears won't be burnt off and talk about Sam McGuire. <laughs> Many congratulations. What a year it's been for you and for the Kerry uh, football team. Yeah, delighted, Martin. Yeah, it was uh, great to win the, the big one after, after eight years, which is a long time in Kerry. So great celebrations and great warm glow uh, all over the county. Of course, I spoke to you here in London t over 12 months ago before you become uh, Kerry manager again, and uh, we were hoping that time that you'd be uh, coming into the job. You've had a great run uh, with the Kerry team. Yeah, delighted, yeah, it was a dream year really, we, we entered four competitions, we won all four and uh, it was a very enjoyable year and I think the fact that the All-Ireland was played in July uh, made the celebrations extra special, the kids were off school, there was a great atmosphere around the, the towns that we, we, we visited with the Cup and uh, yeah, delighted. From your point of view, of course, like you say, the seasons have changed and the All-Ireland was played in July, do you think that's going to be a big benefit to club football? Oh, well, yeah, the, 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 the split season will help the clubs, no, no doubt about it, because they're playing their competitions at a good time of year. And uh, there's plenty of football still going on in Kerry. And uh, the weather is changing a little bit now, but 
it's been a great uh, club season as well as, as inter-county season. Now you're here tonight celebrating the Kerry Dinner Dance, always a great occasion. Yeah, fantastic, yeah, I've been coming over for years and it's great to have this, the Sam Maguire here tonight to, uh, to embellish the occasion. And uh, great to see Link Carman getting Kerry Man of the Year. Um, all my own people came from Link Carr. my mother came from a place called Letter Gollive near Cloon Lake. And my grandmother came from a place called Glen Vicky, which is uh, on the way into the Brady Valley. So I have uh, great connections with Link Carr. And uh, my sister lives there in a place called Clahorach. And uh, yeah, uh, great connections between Drummond and Link Carr always. Noel, your second year into your presidency now of the GEA. How is things going for you? It's going very well. The first year, obviously, with the COVID, it was um, working on teams and um, it was a bit difficult. There was no games, no activity, activity for the first year, uh, but the last year now has been absolutely fantastic. We're back to normal. We uh, had all our competitions with the Northern Games, with the ABC, and we've had a full round of pictures and it's wonderful to be back. Now, of course, the Northern Games was a huge success uh, for this first year up there in Manchester. And, of course, your ABC Games down here is always a great, great success. But the point of it all is, it's the one great thing for getting underage football going. It's unbelievable. And um, as I've stressed, it, it was the 10th, actually, anniversary of the ABC and to the inaugural of the Northern Games. And for the first year in the Northern Games, I can see that going from strength to strength and will follow suit like the ABC. But then again, when you look at the ABC, having spent 10 years on it, and you look at the, uh, the London team that performed in the All Ireland Junior Football Championship this year, along with Warwickshire, London had all homegrown players and Warwickshire had 75% homegrown players. And that is the strength of the ABC, of the the young lads coming forward going from the age of 8, 10, 12 up to minor level and then on to adult playing for their counties is wonderful. Now you've got young uh, Joe McEwen as well performing for us tonight now he brought the house down last time. We're looking forward to that he's fantastic isn't he? Fish mom myself and you know it, it brought me years and years of joy so I'm looking forward to seeing Joe tonight he's outstanding. But I put my own special memory of the county that's so dear to me. If my parents were able to be here tonight, they would be so proud. And the fact that Kathy and I are here tonight, they'd be delighted. So for me, that's an absolute win-win for us. Music was a massive part of our lives. Um, as was food and like entertainment, but the whole thing around football and sport was, you know, a big part of my father's life and my mother's life. So yeah, to have everything like represented in the room tonight is fantastic. It's a great night for uh, anybody with um, from Irish heritage or and from Kerry. It's an absolutely fantastic opportunity just to connect, reconnect and have a good crack and enjoy yourselves. Great nights, always great nights, always are. Being on the committee for Kerry Association London's great. Having my friends here who really are passionate about Kerry, amazing. My mother, why I got involved in this, has passed away, as you know, Martin, yeah. and um, I'm keeping it on, keeping it ongoing, and for my children are joining in as well, and it means a lot to me. And as you know, we've got a lot of good people, the freedom of the city of London, and that's my gift to Kerry and Ireland. Father John, it's great to see you back here in London for the Kerry Dinner Dan. Of course, it's like coming home to you, isn't it, here tonight? Well, so many of them I've known since, well, for the last 40 years, really, yeah? It's great to meet them and to be part of the, the buzz that goes on every year, you know? Well, it's great to be back, as I say, and it's great to see that they the torch is being passed on to another generation, you know. Uh, I don't think that will ever, that the, what's been sown will ever die, you know. Yeah. It's there. Last year was the first year here, but uh, it, it's tremendous really, like it's, it's made for, for the purpose really, if you look at it, the, the, the conference room, the whole lot is so beautiful, yeah. I've got my hands on the Sam Maguire Cup now, and these Kerry lads will not get it back. So while you're away for a break, I'm off to hide this in the boot of my care.
press this and you can see this hear this taste this and experience this Press the green button at Ireland.com. Eurogold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Eurogold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial and industrial build. La Vita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes, using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. The Warrington Irish Club friendly and welcoming club keeping the Irish culture alive. We have Irish and country music every Saturday night, tribute nights, race nights, charity nights and karaoke. All live sports are shown on big screens. We have snooker, dominoes and crown green bowling teams along with arts and craft. Pop in for a friendly welcome and book your event at the Warrington Irish Club. Give Frank a call on 01925 243 363. Mulligan's Funeral and Monumental Services are a family-owned funeral service first established by the late Brian Mulligan in 1996. We provide funeral homes in Gorton, Manchester and Reddish, Stockport and we pride ourselves on giving a friendly and professional service to all the families who use our service. Contact us on 0161 432 0809 Founded in Kilkenny, Ireland in 1702, but lost on a bet on a horse race in Deauville, France, 1918. Sullivan's was re-established a few years ago by direct descendants of two great Kilkenny brewing families, the Smithicks and the Sullivans. We're about to embark on our own journey across the United Kingdom. But this time, we won't bet the brewery. <laughs> Sullivan's. Brewing is in our blood. Press the green button and visit the island of Ireland. See Ireland.com. Welcome back. Now we're here at the Hilton Hotel in London for the Kerry Association Dinner Dance. Now I've just put Sam in the boot of my car and I'm going inside to see if anyone will miss him. The amount of work that's gone into tonight behind the scenes is just unbelievable. I know you've been there at the forefront with your team organising this, but my goodness, what, what a show you put on. Oh, there's a huge team involved, you know. There's a great team and we're, we're all involved in it, so it's fantastic. There's a great team. But look, of course, sponsorship is vitally important and I know you'd want to say a little thank you to them. Oh, fantastic sponsors. The Dentim O'Sullivan Group have sponsored us here tonight. The Glen Carr Group, um, Adrian O'Malley from Mayo has sponsored our flowers. Henry Construction, Team Force, Rochford Construction. Oh my goodness, I'm, I hope I haven't forgotten anyone. A huge, great response with our sponsorship. Yeah, lovely, lots of sponsors. It's a great occasion to come together. We'll be busy during the night. We have, our, uh, we have world champion dancers that are stuck in the middle of it as well. So that's what you want. And of course you're a busy man at home every day on RTE presenting your show. Yeah. Lovely to, to watch it as well. Yeah, we do about 170 Today shows every, every year, I suppose. We, were, we had to change no more than yourselves during COVID. You had a different system, we had a different system as well where we were interviewing lots of people on Skype. And this is the first year we came back now in two and a half years where everybody was allowed back into the studio again. And only about six weeks ago when we came back, we had no masks. We didn't have to wear masks around the studio. So we were delighted for that. Very busy. Of course, the Rosa Tralee was back after uh, two years of absence as well. 
really, really happy with the way things went. People were wondering what's it going to be like now. It was bigger than better in Tralee in 2022 and it's going to be bigger again in 2023. Mikey, many congratulations on becoming Mayor of Tralee earlier on this year. Thanks William Martin. Yeah, it's a huge honour for myself and my family obviously. Um, delighted with the year so far obviously as we're we're exiting out of COVID. A uh, huge appetite for events and people to get out and about. We've seen it in Tralee. We've had a couple of hugely exciting um, openings over the, the recent couple of weeks and months. Tralee Fina Greenway opened last week. Uh, we had a huge Trust More event last weekend, fire show in the town. Uh, like I said, county is buzzing, Tralee is buzzing at the moment. The Rose of Tralee was one of those huge events we've had in the last number of weeks. Uh, we had an incredible feedback uh, from local businesses in terms of diaspora returning to Tralee, uh, friends and families of the Rose contestants and people in general just getting back out and enjoying the festival and what it has to offer, um, pubs, restaurants, uh, family fun events. We kind of ticked every box to be honest with you. Uh, it was a huge local event. Uh, it's one of the key drivers in Tralee, um, like every festival is throughout, our, uh, throughout Kerry. Um, key driver for the economy, key driver for tourism. Tourism of course is our biggest uh, gig in, in Kerry. Um, it's our key industry, uh, two and five jobs are directly related, uh, it's worth about 422 million to our county every year, which is a huge driver, so it's, you know, a lot of that focus is obviously driven by the fact that we're so accessible. Uh, I know we're, we're, we're in the southwest of Ireland, but in the same breath, uh, we have an airport on our doorstep. I walked out of my house this morning at about half nine, quarter to ten, and I was in Luton Airport at uh, about quarter past twelve hugely accessible part of the world. Um, we're lucky enough that we have so many tourism offerings. Beautiful county. Look, if I could say one thing to Kerry people at, at the association dinner tonight is make sure you get back over the next 12 months, come and see what Kerry's all about. You all know well what it's about, um, but we have plenty of new offerings. Hayley, you were very honoured tonight. You got the first dance with Dahi O'Shea. I did indeed. Not sure if it was dancing or what it was. We just went around the floor a couple of times in a circle. <laughs> now, of course, you're London Rose, the current London Rose, and you were over there representing London at the Rose of Tralee. What was that like? I can't put it into words. It was honestly the most eye-opening and brilliant experience I've ever been involved in. You don't realise you need to be involved in an experience until you do it. And that is what this was. I met the most amazing people. I saw parts of Ireland that I'd never seen before. The community and the spirit within Ireland is unreal, like second to none. Um, and yeah, it was just thinking back to it now, like brings tears to my eyes. It was just unreal, um, unbelievable. I think they had over 15,000 people at the parade. Like the amount of traffic they get from every corner of the world, like Toronto, New York, London, Sydney, it's, it's incredible. And Trudy is a fantastic town. Now you're the current Rose of London until next year, of course. How is that going for you now? You're back home here, are you busy? Yes, <laughs> I've got lots of events to attend to, which I'm happy for, I'm excited. A lot of charity events, a lot of, um, fundraising and important events within the Irish community, which is fantastic. Ethel, tell me, when did you immigrate from Kerry? In 1964, I came from Kerry and I went to Stoke and Trent to the City General Hospital to do nurse training. And then after that, when I finished in 1968, I came to Croydon. For years, I've been interested in the history of nursing, you know, and I realized that there was no um, uh, book or research done on Irish nurses. I started interviewing colleagues and other people that I was in touch with and got their stories. And then uh, during lockdown, I, um, I thought it's now or never to get it published. And I have a friend who's got a small publishing company and he agreed to publish it for me. Uh, he was in touch with me about three times a, a week on Skype. I'd never used Skype before, so that was an experience, you know. So what's the name of the book, Ethel? Uh, Ireland's Loss, Britain's Gain. Now, how can people buy it? Where is it on sale from? It's on sale on Amazon, 
and it's also on sale on bythebook.ie and also uh, for my publisher, uh, Rainbow Valley Books. I can't let you go tonight without mentioning your very good friend and our very good friend that sadly passed away as well, Canon Moss O'Connell. Okay, yeah, exactly. Um, Moss was, um, strange enough, he was the last priest, I think, to win an All-Ireland Senior Medal. And right up to the end, that was so precious to him, you know? But um, he left a tremendous legacy, as you know, and everybody in Manchester as well. He was just one of those special people that you meet. Tell us a little bit about the lovely part of Kerry that you come from. It's, descri it's trademarked as the spirit of the Reeks and it's described as almost heaven. Glen Carr is a beautiful place with rivers, valleys and mountains you wouldn't see anywhere else. It's a great place to live and I know that my children, it's deep in their hearts. There was no doubt in my mind when I did start Lords It's Not My Own Business that it's going to be called Glen Carr and we're very proud to be from Glencar, we're very proud to be from Kerry and I think that resonates for our entire family. Dad's speech today, Natasha's spoke so eloquently about it and we're so proud to be the dad to a diaspora. The diaspora of Glencar is it's everywhere, Glencar, Kerry, we're so very proud to be from there. We, we, uh, there was never a minute in my life where I didn't think I was going to succeed, I just thought I will make Glencar, it was always going to we were going to succeed, we were going to it enable guys from Glencar, but I think we've got 20 people now from Glencar who have come over to London to work for us, to Glencar Construction Group. Glencar Construction now established in Kerry and in Dublin and the lads we've trained and enabled in London and in Manchester and Birmingham will come back home now to Kerry, to Dublin and they'll deliver the same way that Glencar Construction has. As chairman of Glencar, you must feel very proud of the way the company has gone and your son here, all the great work that he has done. Absolutely, and more so because of the values of the company. It's, it's about people, about protecting people, about customer relationships and treating customers as we like to be treated ourselves. And that we get 70% repeat business because we work honestly and authentically. And Eddie has a very good team and a very good team of teams. And all of them are given the proper mandate to do their job. Consequently, they are more than happy to stay with Glencar. That's why we're building a strong team and Glencar will be a serious player in the future. It already is, but it's continuing to grow. It's our job now to make sure that we're helping the next generation and Eddie is personifying that in his business with a fabulous team, with lots of people from Kerry, from Glencar and from Ireland really getting an opportunity like, like we got, like Dad got. We are literally standing on the shoulder of giants, Dan, Tim, Dad, and for us, people have gone before us, and it's, it's, it's up to us now to continue to set legacy. Danny, great to see you at this wonderful occasion. I'm delighted and honoured to be here tonight. I've been coming to the Care Association dance for the last number of years since I started, really, and a, a, a wonderful man. Got the Care person the others here. Pat and Matt, are you from? Got me on the care. Man that done the lot, so it's great, great, and I love to see people getting on. And the Kerry Association is great for people, and I'm, I'm very delighted now that to be a part of that. Of that people. Now, how are you recovering since you become uh, the Freeman of London? Fantastic, Arthur, you're the Freeman of London. It's unbelievable, I tell you the truth. Very happy. A mighty man, an absolutely mighty man. It's always a great night for fundraising as well. It certainly is, and uh, we're going to have fantastic prizes at the end of the night and all the money will go to some fantastic causes here as well with the Irish community in London. Last year I asked you to make me a prediction about the All-Ireland, who was going to win it. What do you think for next year? They will win it again and they'll be more stylish and a higher performance from Kerry next year but the, the monkey's off their back and they will perform better next year. What a wonderful night we've had here with the Kerry Association in London. Outstanding music, great food and wonderful people. We hope you've all enjoyed the show at home. Now, we'll be back next week at 7.30 as usual. So from me and all my Kerry friends here in London, Come on, take care lads. to you all.
press the green button and visit the island of Ireland. See Ireland.com.